All right, legends, welcome back. Today's the day. The crews are there and a big box. Let's commit a bit of aviation. All right, so the box arrived. A little bit worse for wear. Bashed up. It's not too bad. Um, as you can see on top, someone's been walking on top of the box. There's footprints on top of the box and smashed the two cross members. The lid was collapsed in. But this is an aerodrome aeroplanes uh, swap with camel kit. And so you've got the welded fuselage. I'll pull all this out today, do my inventory and have a look over it. Uh, got some wheels or might be spun aluminium wheel covers down there. Basically just tubing. See some cables. Uh, the cow, uh, Robert Basley, if he ever watches this. So the cow's got some damage over there. This was actually around that way. Uh, I'm not too worried about that. I reckon I can tin tap that out. But yeah, a bit of damage on the spun aluminium cowl. Looks like a fuel tank there. And for international shipping, a lot of stuff's just loosely packed in there. I want to keep the channel as positive as I can, but just on the shipping, I got to get it off my chest, I guess. It was a bit of a nightmare getting it out here. Took forever, delay after delay after delay. Fill out all these forms, tell everyone that you have to ring me to get access to the airfield and I have to be there, I don't live there. Um, and lo and behold, yesterday I'm up the creek fishing. When I finally get phone coverage, there's a guy with a truck driving around the airfield looking for me with my kit. This is after I rang them yesterday morning. So anyway, the experience wasn't that great. Um, and the shipping company, you know, specifically said as well, there's no forklift at this end. So I don't know how they expect you to get it off a truck. I mean, it's, it's like five or six metres long, this box, most 300 kilos. Um, and then the driver showed me his instructions. It didn't even have my phone number on the, uh, yeah, on the, on the delivery instructions. And unfortunately, a few people are a bit security conscious at the airport and uh, turned him away. So anyway, long story short, we've got the box. Let's move ahead. We'll pull it apart and I'll show you what's inside. All right, side of the box is off. Opening it up. Just putting the parts down there. A few parts over here. Cow, fuel tank, uh, wheels, wheel covers. Got my first, it's annoying, unidentified parts. Anyway, keep going. Okay guys, day two. So I, um, as previously mentioned, I unpacked everything. I didn't film that. Sort of got excited. Flat packed the box. If anyone was going to use the box as a, as a bench, especially for international trip shipping, it, um, it sort of ended up trashed. But got a lot of plywood there and I kept all the wood to make tables and jigs and whatever. I um, feel like I won the lotto, but probably would have been cheaper just to buy the plywood. <laughs> so the fuselage, all looking good. Um, looks like it's just arc welded, I think. And it's got a lot of, uh, like the pepper that you get, the slag or the, I don't know what the welders call it, overspray. Um, like there, if you can hear that. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just hit that with, um, like the grinding wheel, the uh, scotch bride in the grinder, forget what you call it, and flapper wheel, I think it is. Looks like these bits got forgot, forgotten, and we'll put on after the primer's gone on. Now, my thoughts are as well here's the cockpit, pilot's bottom seat that goes there. So this will be all visual, this stuff down there, not so much. So whether I spray matte black, this dove grey, that's primer at the moment, um, or do I give it a coat of epoxy primer? Uh, bear in mind, what I'm thinking is the fabric is only as good as what it's stuck to. So if the primer is not stuck to the metal and you glue the fabric to the primer, it can rip off, I guess. So that's what I'm thinking on that. 
Uh, there's a couple of bits of plywood in the kit. I'm not sure if they're packing pieces or for the fuselage. I've written on their fuselage. They could be the side panels, um, but it's sort of cheap. You can get better plywood, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. These pieces down here, um, I don't know, in this day and age, sort of let get it down a bit. I would have thought it'd be pretty easy to get that all laser cut. I know it's trying to keep you know, it's trying to keep costs down. Um, you know, it's easy to do it on the bandsaw, but like the pilot's headrest, for argument's sake, just a semicircle and a bit of ploy. Um, laser cut it. Scott Matthews, stop with camel burnt in there, it'd be a nice touch but anyway you can only hope dashboard's fairly substantial like 3.8 I think that is um, plywood just marked out now with the unpacking nothing or well, some stickers came off and I actually thought it took a while for the penny to drop this part here I actually thought that was the rib template to bend the ribs because it wasn't identified this sticker was in the bottom of the box then I sort of, the penny dropped, and I'm pretty sure they go on the side of the fuselage to start to go from flat fuselage sides to round, and then obviously goes out to the cow. So I'm pretty sure that's where they go. As far as the rest of the stuff, so the hangar's looking good, cruiser's over there. She's a bit jealous, but that's all right. We'll go for a fly soon. So I've got plenty of space. And the whole sop with camel literally fits under my bench. So if anyone thinks the kit's all prefabricated and done, well no it's not. So the big bits, I've got some aluminium spun wheel covers, the cow, fuel tank, um, hardware bags. This here's the engine mount. Uh, that's the engine mount for a Rotec 2800, so needs a bit of work, obviously. So there's a lot of questions at this stage. Uh, bags of rivets. I might even use, I've still got heaps of left or extra rivets I bought for the Zenith with my, I've got these rivets here. Okay, tons of them. So Zenith stuff with all the Zenith drill bits to match those rivets and the two guns. So I might use Zenith rivets, we'll see how we go. Um, and there's all the tubing under there. So bottom shelf, that's four wings. And at the other end, um, got things like, they're the that's a turtle deck. I think I've got rudder, horizontal stab, might be landing gear. Um, they are, the kit is labelled E, E's elevator, E for elevator, uh, VF, might be vertical fin. So that is how it all unpacked. So in anticipation I went down the shop for myself, spent a few dollars. Um, some new drill bits, hopefully, haven't tried this yet. But so, they're the old ones, and hopefully, that box yes, fits on my shelf. So, I'm just going to replace, replace the lot Imperial metric drill bits. And these ones will just go under the bench, they're basically blunt. Most of those they built the whole aircraft. Um, but I'll hang on to those few broken ones. So replace those. And I lashed out. It's only King Chrome, but medium, moderately priced digital vernier caliper, which should help me with um, some of those measurements, 0.147, you know, that sort of thing. Um, or 147 there. And these things are getting dear now, but the little Dremel sanding discs and some cut-off cut off blades. So from here, 
a little bit overwhelmed, but a little bit at a time, and I know it'll work. Uh, there's a few, um, a few tools I probably need. I wouldn't mind making myself or buying a folder, a little folder, or metal metal break, you know, just to fold up bits of metal. There are um, maintenance hangers on the airfield here that I could go and, you know, borrow stuff, but just to build one bracket, um, be nice just to have it on my workbench there, just for that little, those little gussets and stuff like that. So, uh, where, where, what's the first step? I'm gonna clean up the fuselage, just sort of rattle can with the primer, the areas that I, I touch up, I'll do that outside one day. And I think the first step, maybe whack a coat of paint on there. What do you guys think? Comment below. Black, gray, I don't want to paint it like wood because metal trying to look like wood will look crap in there. Um, black, grey, maybe green. Uh, let me know what you think. And I want to clean up this bench, not clean it up, but my vertical drills seen better days. I've had that a, had that a while. You know, it was good for model aircraft. I may need to upgrade it. Although I work with what I got, don't want to go spending a fortune on everything just yet. Um, might just give it, a, give it a bit of a service and look at that. Got a new Scotch Bright wheel. I've taken that off. Um, these things are great if you're doing aluminium work. I've got it in the bag here. The. No, it's in. Oh, here it is. Uh, this one's worn down a bit. Not cheap. Uh, I'm trying to find a cheap spot to get one of these. Um, you're looking at a couple hundred bucks for that. But what's left on that did the whole zenith and I buffed every part on that zenith. So I have to order a new one of those. Also while I'm going, as I was driving out here, I thought I might get some PVC pipe because it's cheap. <clears throat> now this might sound silly, but there's a lot of um, drilling through tubing. So if you can imagine um, what have we got? <clears throat> Let's call this round. There's a lot of those sort of, you know, situations where you need to drill straight through this and straight through the bottom one. So drilling through something that's round is a challenge in itself. But if you have to drill both ends, say a wing spar, so I found these online where this is from the uh, afforder plane actually. So you can see how that works. It's a little block with a hole, drill a hole, whack a Clico in, and then that'll sit square. And then this one, obviously the other end. So it gets you two holes. But I've only got a couple of sizes of those. I think the wing spars look like they're about two inches. Um, there's plenty of tricks on the internet of how to drill holes straight. Also use a long drill bit, so you get a bit of a sighter. Um, but there's some very nervous holes you have to drill that if you get it wrong, you know, you could wreck a wing spar. As you can see, a little bit overwhelmed, don't know where to start. Um, the instructions are a little bit, a little bit how you're going compared to the Zenith. The Zenith is Lego block construction, great plans. Every single rivet on that aircraft and every single part is clearly identified generally more than once in the plans. You might have to look a bit and do some research, but it's all in there. Uh, the plans on this, um, don't know if I mentioned it, the DVD you get with the kit, um, it's three guys, and this is no, I, I just call it as it is, guys, all right, just calling it, calling it as it is. Um, might upset a few people, but the DVD is uh, four, sorry, four guys building a Sopwith Camel in three and a half days. I'm not interested in, you know, this is going to take me two years. Um, so the details are a bit sketchy in there as they're building there. Pulling the pee out of each other. Um, yeah, and the bits you want to see or the questions you have sort of get skimmed over. And not only that, the I'm building a Sopwith Camel, the instructions are for a Fokker DR1 and everything's similar. Well, there's some obvious differences. It's only got two wings to start with. Um, 
year. So the questions I've asked Robert Basley over at Aerodrome Aeroplanes, first question was why the plans written the way they are. You know, measurements like 47.41 inches, 27.285 inches. You know, I don't know why it's not 28 inches or 27 and a half or 27 and an eighth. You know, fractions, the, the fractions seem to be in decimals. Um, even the rivet size is 0.187. So I had to Google all, Google all that which means there's opportunity for error to creep in there as well. I'm sure I'll get a hang of it at the, at, uh, eventually. Um, the other question I had, having a quick look, the plans call for a bottom hinge on the rudder post, a centre hinge and a top hinge, but there's two, two hinges already on the rudder post. Um, I can only assume maybe one's there so you can't get it wrong if you build the rudder, so this one's on the bottom, so on the rudder, bottom of the rudder would have to be the, the, this part, the actual hinge would have to be on top. They're only like two pieces, mirror image of each other. Um, or maybe they, maybe they go like that, I'm not too sure. I have to check the size of the clevis pin. I might be getting ahead of myself. Maybe it actually goes like that. My original thought was, Let's so say you can't, whatever way you put the one on the rudder, you can, you can use it and then cut the other one off. But thinking about it now, potentially they go like that. I'll see how many hinges I've got in the kit. This is where the plans aren't exactly 100%. Alright guys, so thanks for watching that one. Um, we'll forge ahead, see where we get to in the next video. Thanks for watching.